Welcome to the Tales of Allen. I'm Craig Erickson. This series will take you a little deeper into the history of the city of Allen. Today, we'll learn how residents communicated by telephone in the early days. Your eye, you used to be able to pitch better than that. Hello? Yeah, what? Sweeney, what can I do for you? What? Wait a minute, I'm not Sweeney, I'm Duffy. Listen, Sweeney, you can't do that to me, not the day of all days. Uh, wh what's the matter with you? Are you loony? Jumping, Jehoshaphat. Now listen, Sweeney, this is no time. What? Oh, all right, I suppose so. Yes, if you have to, you have to. He had to. How do you like that? Everything happens to me. <laughs> The Allen Telephone Company was a family-owned and operated telephone company, independent of major conglomerates like Southwestern Bell. Approximately 700 independent telephone exchanges were located throughout Texas during the Depression and World War II. Some exchanges had as few as 12 customers. Hello, Sandra, give me no man's land, my daddy's there, my mama told. Located on the second floor of a building on Main Street, the Allen Telephone Company served Allen and the adjacent farms. The Vinnie Tucker family owned and operated the ATC and later sold it to the Carpenter family in the late 1940s. Cap Wilson, Betty Bell Howlett, and Bertha Williams served as telephone operators earning $30 a month. Family and friends substituted on weekends or during illness. Vinnie Tucker lived in the Allen area and the 1910 U.S. Census lists his profession as telephone operator, but no company is specified. Telephony, a magazine for the telephone industry, did not recognize the company's existence until 1924. However, an easement was granted by the Houston and Texas Central Railroad to the Allen Telephone Company to place wires across their right-of-way on January 1, 1913. Although there is no official record when the company began, it can be assumed it was in operation by 1913. Telephone operators worked 12-hour shifts in an unair conditioned office. A bed was available for the night shift operator, and the switchboard delivered a louder ring during the night to awaken the operator. The magneto switchboard contained numerous plugs that the operator pulled by hand and inserted into one of the mini jacks located on its board. A caller rarely had to know a number because the operator knew local names and numbers by heart. The switchboard system was connected to hand-cranked telephones located in businesses and houses throughout Allen. Most phones were part of a shared four or five party line. A specified number of rings, such as two longs and a short, indicated that the call was for a particular household. One of the system's inconveniences was that calls made during the night might rouse other households. Citizens who either lived in remote places or could not afford phone service could use a phone located in the stairway to the second floor of the Allen Telephone Company. Since this was not a pay phone, a caller would pay the operator on duty. Then the lightning struck the Goon Creek party line. Party line. Happy said and Service outages during a major storm were a certainty because wires were poorly installed, sometimes connected only by a nail to a tree. Residents were often forced to make their own repairs if they wanted service. The old rural lines were single wire ground return lines on bodark posts, sometimes on trees, maybe even on fence posts. And they sagged to the ground and they had got branches in them and, which, and when it rained they got wet and it was noisy. Uh, they hummed a lot and you could hear, instead of just talking on a plain line, you hear brrrr the whole time you talked. The Allen Telephone Company's party lines allowed operators or other families to eavesdrop on other callers. Sometimes this served a useful purpose because it allowed the operators or neighbors to know where families were. If a call was made, an operator could inform the caller that the requested household was at church doing chores or visiting friends. An operator might ask the caller, do you want me to ring them there? And Betty Bell knew everybody. She knew where everybody lived, where everybody was. She listened in, of course, and she knew everything. That operator must have known you, said, I called and she said, they're not at home. Said they're over here in town. They're all fixing to go to the junior senior banquet. He said, she must have known you. He said, she knows everybody in town. A caller might ring the operator and ask them to stick their head out the window to see if someone was on Main Street and ask them to purchase a loaf of bread before coming home. You know Big Daddy, of course. Sometime he, he'd hear click, 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 and he'd say, everybody hang up. 
This is a private conversation I'm fixing to have, and I don't want everybody listening to me. You could hear them all hang up. Young couples Corton could hear giggling when sharing sweet thoughts over the telephone. Other people recall making a midnight call from a New Year's Eve party and wishing Vinnie Tucker a happy new year. By the 1950s, improved service was needed. Thelma Marion made a visit to House Speaker Sam Rayburn at his home in Bonham. Well, see, we had a deplorable system in Allen. It was just, you'd fix your own line up or you didn't have a line, period. So we just got kind of disgusted and we called him and he said, come over, we'll have an audience. And he treated us royally. The ladies told the legendary Mr. Sam their woes, and while they were sipping tea, he made a call to an official at the Federal Communications Commission. Within days, it was announced that Southwestern Bell was purchasing the Allen Telephone Company. Allen had to sell their little exchange to somebody out of town, and we had to be without, completely without a telephone for so many months. Years of bureaucratic procedures were avoided. That act was one of Mr. Sam's many contributions to Allen. During the late 1950s, the hand-cranked phone was replaced by the dial phone. And although the personal service of the operators was missed, reduced static, enhanced sound quality, and improved chances of completing calls were greatly appreciated. Further improvements to Allen's phone service came in 1990 when Mayor Joe Farmer and Councilman Jim Wolfe spearheaded an effort to facilitate direct dialing to the Dallas Metroplex. In less than a century, Allen's telephone service has taken us from talking across town to communicating around the world. And it all started on the second floor of a building on Main Street. For more information, contact Tom Keener at the Allen Public Library. Be sure to watch for another episode of The Tales of Allen here on ACTV 15, Allen City Television. I'm Craig Erickson. I'll see you around town. Oh,